Hello, my name is Craig Shearer. I'm a software architect and developer based in Auckland, New Zealand. I work remotely as a contractor for a UK-based company developing software in the healthcare space. So we have a patient management system and a workforce management system which does HR and rostering for medical staff. I've been developing software since the late 1980s and have been developing web software since the late 90s and delved into the uh, web front end and JavaScript in about 2010, Angular in about 2014 and have been working in Angular ever since. Today I'm going to talk about how to build a robust web socket interface using RxJS. So most applications use REST over HTTP but WebSockets allow us to have real-time updates without having to poll a backend. Most apps will use a combination of REST and WebSockets. So for this talk I put together a demo project and this replicates the concepts from my current Angular project. We have front-end components that subscribe to notifications from the backend and the WebSocket is used for subscribing and receiving those notifications. All other traffic is using traditional REST over HTTP. The technology I've used for the demo is to use a NestJS server. So I'm using raw, web, raw, raw WebSockets, whereas most demo apps you can find on the internet implement a chat server using the Socket IO protocol, which does have some advantages, but I wanted to stick to the technology that I had used in my current application. And of course I have an Angular front end to demonstrate this. There are various uh, choices for WebSockets in Angular. So my old AngularJS project just used a native WebSocket that the browser provides. But in my current project I used RxJS which provides a WebSocket which is a specialized subject. So how do we go about making it robust? So one thing with WebSockets is that they are always connected to the back end, so that connection can break if you lose your connection to the internet. So the app uh, connects at the startup and it remains connected or should appear to remain connected to the WebSocket. I have an Angular service that manages a single WebSocket connection and then keeps it connected. So let's have a look at the demo project. So as I said, I've got a NestJS as the back end. And then I've got my Angular front end. And the first thing that I built in the NestJS server is a REST endpoint with a controller. And so we have an HTTP client in our Angular front end that sends HTTP requests to the REST endpoint and receives HTTP responses. And then I added in a WebSocket gateway which exposes the WebSocket. And then my WebSocket is created in a socket service which can then exchange, exchange messages with the back end. So there are components that want to listen to particular notifications from the back end. So they call a listen method on the socket service and receive an event stream back. So looking at the socket service, uh, there are various streams in here. There is a stream of subscription messages and a stream that determines whether or not the socket is connected. And those are combined together to create a stream for messages to send out via the socket. There's a messages stream that is used to deliver messages back to any subscribing front-end components. So a component comes along and calls the listen method on the socket service. What happens is that that causes a subscription message to be sent out over the socket to the back end so the back end knows that something wants to listen to, mess uh, to notifications of that type. So notifications come in as messages and then they get filtered for the event type that was subscribed to by the front-end component and if the event type matches then they get delivered to the component. At some point in time 
the socket might get disconnected so it goes away but the important thing to to remember here is that the component is still connected to the service it's still connected to this messages stream so I've got a timer that comes along and it tries to reconnect the socket which it will eventually do successfully and then things continue on as usual further messages get delivered and the component sees those messages at some point later the component then gets destroyed so that will then potentially send an unsubscribe message to the back end out over the socket and things get cleaned up so let's just have a look at some code so the component API for my socket service uh, subscribes it wants to listen to events and this is implemented by calling the listen method on the service and providing a particular event type to listen to and in this case here of this code this listens to a message uh, coming a chat message coming from uh, the back end and as you can see in the tap this is just um, taking the messages and pushing in, pushing the messages body into a uh, a piece of state in the component so the component receives the messages via the returned observable from calling the listen method the socket service itself I'm a big fan of NGRX component store so I'm using that the WebSocket is created at startup and that uses the uh, WebSocket subject config to create the configuration for the WebSocket the important thing here is that there is an open observer and a close observer and these this piece of code is called whenever the WebSocket is connected and when it's disconnected so the service always knows what the state of the connection is and when it gets disconnected it can try to reconnect so there's a shared web, web socket that sends and receives all messages so creating the socket so the connect method uh, creates the socket using the config that was created and received messages once the socket is connected get tapped and just pushed into the messages piece of state so this decouples the component subscriptions from the WebSocket instance so reconnecting so we attempt to reconnect after a delay so this is fairly simple so we just have a timer that fires every second well every every retry seconds um, there's a constant there that determines how often it should try to reconnect and then we just keep retrying connecting until it is connected so this is a fairly naive strategy here maybe at some point we could give up and provide the user with an option to reconnect once again uh, but this is a demo code so good enough for now so uh, subscribing so the important thing here is because we're sharing a WebSocket for every single component there could be multiple com multiple components that want to listen to the same event type so we only want to tell the back end that we're interested in this event type once so we have a subscriber first that checks to see whether it's the first subscription for that event type and if so it sends a subscription message to the back end so once we have uh, subscribed then all we're doing is we're piping the messages stream and filtering it for matching on that event type um, and this particular method here has a little bit more complexity in that you can pass either a single event type or an array, an array of event types to listen to so this piece of code here handles the checking to see whether the event type or event types match and the finalize will get called when the component stops subscribing to the stream so generally that will be when the component is destroyed and then we want to unsubscribe if we're the last subscription to that particular event type so 
if there are other components that are still listening for that event type, then we don't want to tell the backend to no longer send us messages of that event type. So putting it all together, the constructor of the service actually sort of orchestrates all of this. So it sets up the config, it connects, and then it watches the queue. So there is the to send queue, which contains any messages that get sent to the back end, which are generally the subscription messages to say, subscribe to this particular event type or unsubscribe from this particular event type. So I put together a demo app. And so this is just a little Angular app that has various components in it. Um, the main one is a chat messenger, which allows sending messages uh, from multiple connected clients and everybody seeing the messages that get sent. There is a disconnect button there to simulate uh, the socket breaking so that we can see what happens uh, when the connection breaks. Uh, there's a little gotcha in Chrome's DevTools, um, which is why I put the disconnect button in. The DevTools allow you to set your uh, connection and appear offline, but that actually doesn't work for WebSockets, it only works for HTTP. So there needs to be some other way of simulating the disconnection. So that's it. Uh, I have put a demo project repo up on GitHub. I've written up a blog post about this project, and I invite you to follow me on Twitter or the new threads. Thank you.